Hello everybody, this is JT Productions, and welcome back to another deep dive video. Uh, if you didn't saw the late, did not see the last part, I'm foregoing doing each team's game by game prediction to instead letting you all pick uh, certain games from uh, certain teams for me to do a little deep dive on, and this way I can go in more depth with each team. Uh, See what I like and what I don't like, and give you a winner of uh, by that. So today I'm going to be doing Georgia at Alabama by suggestion from Tree Beard the Bear nine 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 six. So let's start out. Uh, if you saw the last part, I'm not going to go as in depth as I did for Georgia's uh, team as I did. And that one, because that was about 30-something minutes. Instead, I will really hit the high points. Uh, to start off, Georgia has a returning quarterback in Carson Beck. They have Gunnar Stockton behind him. Jaden Rashada, uh, that saga with him. And Florida, very funny. You have a, a freshman coming in, and Ryan Glissy. Very good quarterback room. Running back, Trevor Etienne from Florida. Another good stab in the back uh, to Florida from Georgia. Roderick Robinson, sophomore. Branson Robinson, who I'm so glad's back. Redshirt, sophomore. And Cash Jones, redshirt junior. So the backfield for Georgia, returning starting quarterback, if Carson Beck can just improve his deep ball accuracy and him not getting as flustered as he did last year in certain points, especially in the game against Alabama last year, he'll be great. He'll be amazing. Uh, ETN, he's going to be missing one game this year because of a suspension um, a one-game suspension, I believe, given because of a DUI that happened in March. Um, Branson Robinson coming back after missing all of last year with a knee, uh, knee injury, I believe, leg injury. He's going to be something special. They called him Little, or yeah, Little Chub uh, when he got to Georgia. He is he's very good. He's like a bowling ball. Um, Cass Jones and Roger Robertson are going to be some good depth, uh, rotational guys, along with some freshmen that have come in that are not listed here. So uh, they're going to be, the running back room is going to be probably as good as it's been since 2017 with the potential that it has. At the wide receiver position, of course, it's highlighted by Rara Thomas, Dominic Lovett, and Dylan Bell. Rara Thomas is your, is a very consistent receiver. Uh, he's going to be one of our one of the go tos for Carson. Dominic Lovett was inconsistent last year, but down the stretch he started to really put it on, and he was one of the best contributors in the spring game this year. Dylan Bell really took a step forward last year. Uh, he played running back and receiver. Played running back because uh, our ta- starting running backs were injured, and we needed some depth there. Uh, and he really turned uh, turned it on. He had a really good game against Tennessee. Uh, Florida State game, he had a really good game. Just a very solid performance last year from Dylan Bell. If he can take the next step, he's going to be dangerous. Anthony Evans is an interesting one. He was a freshman last year. He, we haven't seen a lot of him, but he has some potential. Uh, he's, he's very fast and... Um, He's a good special teamer, so we'll see if he can get into the fray. Arian Smith, another question mark. Can he take the next step? Can he be consistent? He's the fastest guy on the team. He's just very consistent. Uh, we saw last year the one big play he had for more than 20 yards uh, was the catch in the SEC championship. So if he can be more consistent, he'll be a vital part to the offense. Uh, Colby Young, transferring from Miami, he's going to be a jump ball receiver. He's like 6'5", 200-something pounds, fast. He's going to be a great part of this offense. Then we got some guys that are question marks. Uh, London Humphreys, transferring from Vandy. Uh, he was called the Vanderbilt version of Ladd McConkey. If he could come to Georgia and be that, that would be great. Uh, then you have senior transfer Michael Jackson III from USC. Uh We'll see if he can break into the uh, rotation. He's more of your uh, slot guy, sort of like a Dominic Lovett. So we'll see about that. Uh, then you got two freshmen behind them, Sokovi White and Nitro Tuggle. 
Uh, tight end, Del- Oscar Delp coming back. He, he'll, he's going to be good. Benjamin Urasek transferred from Stanford. Uh, he was good at Stanford, so maybe you can bring that to Georgia. Lawson Lucky looked good last year as a freshman, and then we get Jaden Riddell in as a freshman. So the skill positions are just just fine. Um, I think we're going to be a really prolific offense this year, or consistent and progressive offense, I, I might add. Um, and it's all going to start with the offensive line. We got three returning starters in Ernest Green, Dylan Fairchild, and Tate Ratledge that are really cornerstones of the offensive line. Xavier Truss is close. He just he he was very inconsistent last year. Now I'll give it to him. He was a guard to start the year last year, and when Amarius Mims kept going down, he had to fill in, and he was spotty. He just he needs to be more consistent if he's going to play that right tackle role. And then the first new starter on the offensive line, Jared Wilson will be making his first start this year. Redshirt Jr. from uh, Redshirt Jr. Uh, and he's going to be taking over from Cedric Van Pran, who was a true freshman starting starter who started all uh, three years at Georgia. From the little I've seen Jared Wilson, he is a very solid player. I have full trust in him for at center, um, so I believe in him. Behind all of them, you have Monroe Freely, who filled in a good bit as a freshman. He was good. Micah Morris, who's a redshirt junior, he filled in last year a good bit, and he was good. Drew Bobo, I believe that's Mike Bobo's son. Uh, we have not seen much of him. Sadly, Kilton Smith Jr. had to medically retire from football, so I hope everything goes well for him. Uh, and then Bo Hewley, redshirt freshman. Then we got a bunch of, and Jamal Merriweather, redshirt freshman. Then we have a bunch of freshmen that are coming in from this last class. Marcus Harrison, uh, Nair Daniels, Daniel Calhoun, Malachi Tolliver, and Marquise Easley, and Michael Muni. Uh, So good depth there for the offensive line. Overall, the offense is going to be fine, I think. Uh, They improved. They were at a high level last year, uh, just injuries kept them from being at full potential. Hopefully that doesn't happen this year. Um, Going over to the defensive side, we're waiting for one of these three defensive linemen to break out. Terry Newman, Dawkins, Nazir Stackhouse, and Warren Brinson. Uh, It's been due for Warren Brinson for for a couple of seasons now. If he can get to where he is just a game wrecker, or Nazir Stackhouse get to where he's a game wrecker, we don't need all three of them to. We just need one or two. Uh, behind them are some younger guys, Christian Miller, who showed out a little bit last year, and then Jamal Jarrett and Jordan Hall, who are true freshmen and uh, very talented. We have a transfer redshirt freshman, Xavier McLeod from South Carolina, who could get into the rotation, as well as some freshmen, Joseph Jonah, Jonah Agoye, very highly touted, Jordan Thomas, Justin Green, Namdi Agboko, and Nazir Johnson. Going to the linebackers, Michael Williams has moved from the inside defensive end that he was to an outside edge player. Going to be going to work wonders for him. Uh, then on the other side, you have Chaz Chambliss, who is uh, in his fourth season and uh, second season as a starter. He's been just solid all four years he's been here. So if he can keep that up, that'd be good. Behind them, Damon Wilson and Gabe Harris, both were true freshmen that made some plays last season. I believe Gabe Harris was a uh, walk-on, former walk-on, maybe. But they, as long as they keep developing and keep doing well in the rotation, they'll be great. Now, one player that has not seen the starting field yet is Samuel Mpemba, who was very much uh, compared to Lorenzo Carter out of high school. He's going to be a monster once he develops and gets on the field, in my opinion. So we'll see. Going to the inside linebackers, we have Small Munden and C.J. Allen. Very good duo. I think they're going to be a a menace. They're going to be a problem for opposing offenses. Behind them, Jalen Walker, our Swiss Army knife, like Dylan Bell is for offense on defense. In my opinion, he could play any place uh, at linebacker edge. He maybe could even play safety. Uh, Raylan Wilson was a true freshman last year and showed signs that he's going to be a really good player. Um, and then we got some freshmen, Quintavious Johnson, Justin Williams, very, very highly touted. 
Chris Cole, and Chris Jones. In the secondary, uh, Julian Humphrey and Dalen Everett are your projected to be your outside corners. Dalen Everett's going to have to be careful because Ellis Robinson, a five former five star, is right on his tail as a freshman. So we'll see what happens, to Dalen. Uh, and Daniel Harris, uh, he played the star position, I believe, or nickel position. Uh, for Javon Bullard in the bowl game. I don't know if he's trying to be an outside corner or if he wants to go back to nickel, but right now he's projected to be an outside corner, so we'll see. Now, speaking of that, Joel Aguero is projected in that nickel slash star spot. He was a true freshman last year. If he's making strides and he's going to that Javon Bullard role, we'll just have to see there. He's going to fight it out with David Daniel Sisavon and Kyron Jones. Safeties, Malachi Starks, best one in the country. Dan Jackson, Mike Chaz Chambliss, very consistent. Very good player. You just want to root for players like that. K.J. Bolden's another freshman that you could see getting into the starting lineup, whether it's at star, nickel, safety, or whatever. He's just too talented to keep off the field. We also brought in a transfer, uh, Jake Pope from Alabama, who could also fight for a starting safety spot. Uh, other freshmen in the secondary are Andre Evans and DeMello Jones. We still have Peyton Woodrick and Brett Thorson. So Georgia's team, I believe, is going to be one of the best in the country. Looks good. Um, Georgia plays Alabama in, I believe, week four after a bye week. They play them after they play Clemson, Tennessee Tech, and Kentucky. After they play Kentucky, they have a bye week. Then they go to Tuscaloosa to play Alabama. Alabama also has a bye week before this game. They play, I believe, uh, who do they play? They play a smaller school, they play at Wisconsin, and then they play uh, at home against South Florida before the bye week. So, both teams have a bye week before this game. Uh, Alabama's breaking in a new head coach and some new faces on the team. Uh, starting it out, Jalen Milrow, returning quarterback for Alabama, a very electric quarterback. He is one of the... <laughs> he is the most electric quarterback in the country, in my opinion. Uh, Kalen Boer is coming in to try to reel him in with regards to his accuracy and just the offense in general. Uh, Ty Simpson, backup, he's talented. He just hasn't had uh, the chance to start. Dylan Lonergan, same thing, Richard Freshman. And then Richard Freshman transfer Austin Mack from Washington comes in as well. To help out the quarterbacks, though, we have Jam Miller, a junior running back, Justice Haynes, sophomore running back, Richard Young, redshirt freshman running back, and two freshman running backs, Daniel Hill and Kevin Riley. Alabama just brings in talent every single year. You're not going to find an Alabama team that does not have talent these days. Going to the wide receiver, Kendrick Law, coming back from last year. Uh, Kobe Prentice, same thing. Both were starters last year, but you also bring in a the fourth wide receiver on Washington teams like Washington's team last year, Jeremy Bernard, who looked good in Alabama spring game, but we'll see how it goes. He has potential. You also have Emmanuel Henderson Jr., uh, Cole Adams, redshirt freshman, and Jaron Hamilton returning. But you have a bunch of freshmen on this roster as well: Caleb Odom, Bubba Hampton. Rico Scott, Amar Jefferson, and the star of your recruiting class for the offense, Ryan Williams, five-star. Wide receiver, uh, Kobe Prentice and Kendrick Law are very solid. Uh, <clears throat> Jeremy Bernard, we'll see how he pans out, but you're definitely going to be seeing Ryan Williams on the field this year at some point. Tight end, C.J. Dipper. Uh, we saw him a little bit last year. He was sort of... Uh, overshadowed by Amari Nyblack, who is now since transferred to Texas. Uh, Robbie Oates played a lot of fullback last year. Uh, Josh, eh, Josh Cuevas, uh, redshirt junior transfer from Washington. Um, you also have Danny Lewis and Ty Lockwood. So the skill positions for Alabama, they have talent. That's not the issue. The issue on offense is the offensive line. It has been for a couple of years now. They have some games where they play really well, It's but uh, there are also a bunch of games where they don't. You have some good guards, though. Tyler Booker is the star guard for Alabama. Uh, <clears throat> Jaden Roberts uh, taking over for 
Uh, I don't remember who the guard was. I know J.C. Latham was a tackle. But anyways, Elijah Pritchett is your uh, left tackle. Behind him is Caden Proctor, who had a good bit of story from this past season. Caden Proctor, he um, he transferred from Alabama to Iowa early. And then the second cycle, he transferred back to Alabama. So I guess good depth, if anything. Uh, Naquil Bertrand, I believe he's from Washington. Uh, Tyler Booker, like I said, one of the big uh, big gets for this off, big keeps for this offensive line. Parker Brailsford from Washington. So Kalen DeBoer's bringing his center, which is good because Alabama center last year was not good. Jaden Roberts, Richard Jr., and Wilkin Formby, Richard Freshman. Uh, behind them, Rock Montgomery, Richard Freshman, Olas, uh, Alien, Richard Freshman, and Miles McVeigh, Richard Freshman. A lot of Richard Freshman on this offensive line. You bring in some freshmen as well Casey Poe, William Sanders, and Joseph Inota. Inata. So, my, big, my biggest question mark for Alabama is going to be the offensive line and how it, uh, how it improves, if any from last year. So going over to the defensive side, a defensive end, you have a defensive ends, you have Jam- Jamarian Latham, maybe related to JC Latham. Behind him you have a junior transfer LT Overton who transferred from Texas A&M. Very good player from Texas A&M. He was a part of that big uh, number one recruiting class in 2021, I believe. Keon Keeley, very high touted Richard Freshman, Jordan, renowned Richard Freshman as well. On the other side, you have, uh, or as well on the D-line, Tim Smith, graduate. He is a really good player. Tim Keenan, another good defensive lineman. Damon Payne Jr., another good defensive lineman. Jalil Otis, another good defensive lineman. James Smith, you just have so much talent on this D-line. James Smith, Hunter Osborne, Edric Hill, and then a bunch of freshmen, Isaiah Faga, Jeremiah Beeman, and Steve uh, Bormau. This D-line is going to be uh, very good for Alabama, and it's going to be tough to run on them. Linebackers, uh, Quandarius Robinson, uh, Jihad Campbell, and Deontay Lawson. Deontay Lawson is the one, the most talented guy on this uh Linebacking core, in my opinion. So that's a good keep for Kalen DeBoer, Keanu Cott, Quay Roussel, and Yonze Pierre are some returning guys for depth. Justin Jefferson, senior, trans, senior uh, and Jeremiah Alexander, redshirt sophomore, are your depth guys. A bunch of freshmen, Justin Okronkwo, Caden Jones, Sterling Dixon, and Ja'Shawn Ross break out the rest of the depth chart for the linebackers in the secondary for Alabama uh, you are looking at potentially a freshman starting at starting corner Xavier Brown a freshman behind him you have Jalil Hurley redshirt freshman who's going to be fighting for the starting job as well as Jalen uh, Mbakwe as well fighting for that starting corner and then on the other side you have a transfer Damani Jackson coming in from USC Fighting it out with Xavier Mincy uh, for that other corner spot. Star, you have Devontae Smith, Richard Jr., the corner, not the wide receiver, and Red Morgan, freshman. The one thing that stands out to me about this Alabama secondary is the lack of quality depth. Uh, especially at the corner positions, you're looking at a true freshman starting uh, and then a, reg- a transfer on the other side. Uh, it's a bunch of freshmen. Safeties, though, you have redshirt sophomore transfer Keon Saab from Michigan, who was very good for them, and Malachi Moore, a graduate who played very well last year. Behind them, Dre Kirkpatrick Jr., a the son of Alabama legend Dre Kirkpatrick, and Bray Hubbard, a sophomore. In the second, in uh, on special teams, James Burnup will be your kicker or punter, excuse me. And your place kicker, <clears throat> with the loss of Mr. Will Reichert, Graham Nicholson from Miami of Ohio. 
Now, my biggest concern for Alabama is going to be the offensive line and the secondary. Now, you're also breaking in new coaching staff with Kalen DeBoer, new defense coordinator. Uh, the offensive coordinator I'm not worried about because Kalen DeBoer knows what he's doing on offense. So, it's time to make a pick. Georgia versus Alabama in Tuscaloosa. It's going to be a tough game, but with the question marks I have for Alabama, I have less question marks for Georgia. Give me the Bulldogs in Tuscaloosa. Um, so, there you go. Uh, you could call bias on me again, but like I said, it's a tough game. Could go either way. But I think with a new coaching staff there, a lot new for this Alabama team on secondary. <clears throat> Give me the Bulldogs, and that's that's how I think it's going to go. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and go dogs.